Hey guys, Sand Prince here, and considering this is my first official game review, I thought it wise to quickly outline my review process. Keeping things simple, I've decided to go with a 10 point scale, and this will be consistent across all the products I review, including tech. I understand there is a lot of dispute in the community over review scales and which one works best, but this is the one that I believe works for the content I am creating, and so I've decided to go with it. These reviews are of course subjective and it should be understood that this is my take on the product and no one else's. The factors that contribute to the final review score include the story and setting, gameplay and design and finally audio and visuals. For all intents and purposes this review will be spoiler free as this is a recent release and many of you are still climbing into its world. With that wrapped up, let's cue the intro. The Last of Us Part 2 is a direct sequel to 2013's Last of Us, which happens to be one of my favourite games of all time, so you can imagine how eager I was to play the sequel, and I'm happy to report it doesn't disappoint. It's a shining example of excellent game design coupled with unique storytelling, and shows the dominant force that is Naughty Dog. Since Uncharted, Naughty Dog hasn't really put a foot wrong and has been pushing the envelope of game design in terms of presentation, characters and storytelling for years now. Part 2 takes place 5 years after the events of its predecessor and 25 years after the outbreak. We continue to follow the lives of Joel and Ellie who now reside in a far more developed Jackson County. Whilst the original game put us in the shoes of Joel, the second one shines a spotlight on Ellie who is now far more capable of taking care of herself and has grown both physically and mentally. Within the comforts of Jackson County's wall, both Ellie and Joel live relatively peaceful lives. To no surprise, events unfold and the tranquility of Ellie's life is disrupted, sending her on a quest for vengeance and justice. At its core, the story of The Last of Us Part 2 is married to a theme of revenge and hate. At one point I was quite concerned the game would get carried away with these themes and sideline what made the original game so special, the intimate relationship of its protagonist. Fortunately this is not the case and we see the story of Ellie and Joel flourish to new heights. The world itself feels bigger in scope and more fleshed out while its inhabitants feel livelier than ever thanks to excellent acting that you rarely see in games. Much of the game takes place in the city of Seattle. Breathtaking vistas sell the scale and scope of the city while the finer attention to detail brings everything to life, including the dead. The outbreak remains prevalent and much of the city is roaming with hordes of infected and whilst the dead are formidable, it's man who is your greatest enemy. The combat in this game is incredibly brutal. Other games have gore but there's such a hyper realistic depiction of violence in The Last of Us. Limbs can be removed entirely and brain splatter across the wall makes the room look like a Jackson Pollock painting. New to the game is the inclusion of a crawl mechanic and whilst this is nothing new to game design, it adds so much to the experience. The mobility and movement in this game is strangely similar to Metal Gear Solid 5 and personally I think that's a great thing. Enemy variety and AI has seen a major overhaul. Throughout your journey you'll encounter various groups, many of whom utilise different weapons in combat, forcing you to rethink your approach. The AI is also top notch with enemies who flank and rush you in order to remove you from cover. One of their tactics includes the use of dogs. I also had an experience where I was attacked whilst I was upgrading my weapon on the bench and to the best of my knowledge this was entirely unscripted. I don't know how Naughty Dog does it, but every encounter you have with the enemy feels unique, it's very dynamic and when restarting from checkpoint, you tend to find the outcome of your battle very different to the last. It's extremely satisfying. Level design offers a ton of ways to approach combat. Multiple routes and entry points cater towards your chosen playstyle and the world of The Last of Us, whilst beautiful, is equally deadly and can be exploited to your advantage. Amidst the chaos, there's moments of calm, peace and serenity. Engaging in dialogue and exploring your environments can lead to some of the more beautiful moments in the series. Exploration continues to play a huge role in The Last of Us as you are expected to scavenge and search for supplies. The good news is that the world is filled with items and areas for you to explore 
and I'd recommend paying special attention to the environment you're in, as clues are left behind which can help to unlocking weapons and items sooner. If I had to nitpick, the one issue I have with the game is with its horse mechanics. The overall movement and fluidity of the horse felt janky, a mechanic I felt was perfected in Rockstar's Red Dead Redemption 2, but this is a very minor issue and it doesn't detract from the overall experience. From a technical standpoint, this game is sublime. Visuals of this type are unparalleled in the games industry. I've not seen anything look as good as this game. It's truly stunning and the level of detail captured in the world is striking. I've spent countless hours with the game's photo mode, gawking at the beautiful lighting, the complex geometry, the weather and environmental effects, and the animations. The game's art palette sucks you into its world, making every building, every landscape look photorealistic. And it's not just exteriors that we're focused on. The interior of every building I walked into was unique, and the objects and items that remain in the aftermath tell a story. The game does an incredible job at making you believe this world once flourished with life. And all of its visual splendor is amped by the incredible HDR implementation. Audio design is no different. Hearing the fear, anguish and pain in the enemy's voice whilst you crush their bones with an axe is incredibly satisfying. Weather effects such as storms mask your approach when hunting your prey. There were numerous times where I was thrown off my seat due to the immense growl of a bloater or an arrow whisking through the grass only to pierce straight through my shoulders. This is also one of the only games where complete silence can be equally frightening. It's a tech powerhouse with an absurd amount of polish, and if there's one game you show off to your friends, let it be this one. The Last of Us Part 2 is an incredible experience from start to finish. From the moment I booted into the game, I had to question whether Part 2 could live up to the original game. And without saying too much, I believe this game surpassed the original in every way. Progress and change was inevitable, but with strong similarities to its predecessor and obvious new inspirations from game and cinema, The Last of Us Part 2 performs a delicate juggling act with innovation and tradition, resulting in a game that is a must-buy for PlayStation 4 owners. It's unlikely that we'll see another Naughty Dog game for the next 4-5 to five years, but the tantalising prospect that we are left with is with more powerful hardware on the horizon, what will Naughty Dog do next for the medium and the inevitable part 3? The Last of Us Part 2 doesn't just feel like the next step for the franchise, but for the entire video games industry. In the years to come, people will look back on this game and remember it for its gorgeous visuals, stylistic combat, superb audio design, and of course its characters. But for me, it's much simpler than that. I'll remember it as the game that defined a generation.